Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I present a new updated version of my Lynx spacecraft. If you've seen my videos for long enough you will have encountered this. It's not a real life spacecraft, it's one that I designed for a particular purpose. And we'll take a look at the original model first. So we've got, I've got two here now. Uh, the Neo is the new one, obviously. And the point of it was that I would make the pressure vessels separate of the orbital version of it, the re-entry version of it, so that we could use this pressure vessel, the basic cabin, as a lander can, but if we needed to, we could convert it from a lander can into the orbital version by adding a shell, which is a heat shielded shell that adds a lot of mass to the thing, as it would in real life. The pressure vessel uh, does not have that much mass compared to the heat shielding, all the tiles and all, and the heat shield itself. So this was how the old version looked like. You can see the RCS thrusters poking through. That was a particular thing. Also, the holes for the windows. You can see the holes for the RCS ports. So that was all a thing. You'd put the parachutes on here. I also uh, put seats in, if we could get in there. Uh, the seats were actually based on the size, not the style, of the seats that I actually sit in. There's sort of also screens up there. But anyway, you get the picture. There are little seats here for four. And so that was the original Lynx. Now the updated version, I got textures off of ArtStation. Texture pack that I paid for. Uh, it's a substance painter substance actually. After I put it to use, what it looks like is this. And you can see the remarkable uh, benefit of the new textures. These are, these are spacecraft insulation substance materials by Gessy Bekeye. That's B-E-K-E-Y-E-I on art station so uh, yeah very handy unfortunately again you'd have to have substance painter which is a pay for program it's not like blender which is for free but the internal uh, if I could get my mouse away oops let me no I don't want to right click the neo spacecraft oh well uh, okay somewhere there all right there you go some of the internal textures it's sort of a padded cell kind of thing for our kerbals but uh, that's probably for the best since they'll be bouncing around all over the place so much better there's a nasa texture on the screen i don't know if i can get there it's easier when there's a kerbal in there i put a little nasa logo on the screens there uh, but that's not the only thing i mean the textures are nice and all but there's functionality to this there's improved functionality and we'll see that in a moment they're the same size by the way there's sort of an optical illusion when you put something on top of something else uh, if i put this on top of that that one looks bigger but anyway uh, building it with the rest of the parts now, we have the Neo shell. Now it's sort of tiled. It's sort of got heat tiles on it instead of being generic flat like this. And the same with the error cap here. And even, and uh, let me reroute to that one. And even the heat shield is better. It's now darker and more rounded. But there's another feature, and that's that there is a hatch here that is openable and the seats in here are actually configured like the external command chairs which means that you don't have an IVA view separate you can just you'd have to get your camera in there and take a look at the Kerbals or once uh, the Kerbal is out of the seat you can easily do that I'll show you on the launch pad but yeah uh, well I've got so many parts here I can't even find the command chair but so over here, it still shows the empty seats. Unfortunately, when I click to assign a Kerbal, it doesn't work that way. Uh, it has an error if I try and do this because of the way I configured it. And you, uh, you go, why are we doing this? I'll show you if you aren't clear about that. That's part of the point. But so one way of getting around that, one way of getting around that is to make it the root part. And if it's the root part, then it'll fill the seats automatically, but we can't remove them. <laughs> so it, there is a flaw here. There is a flaw. I'll just leave it as this version and we'll take it outside. Well, the sunlight isn't ideal here, but let us uh, get in there and unseat one of the Kerbals. So we can take a look inside now. It's actually easier from the external view to see inside the spacecraft and see the Kerbals in here. 
In fact, it's almost... I need flick switches, though, but they won't be functional flick switches. Their, their helmets are sort of clipping into the back there. But anyway, let's have Jeb leave seat. And Jeb will take the resources as necessary once he leaves the seat, so... Uh, oops, let me... It is, it's sort of a fuzzy cam thing going here. I didn't put colliders on the internals of the spacecraft, but I did put colliders on the sides of the spacecraft. So the chairs don't have colliders, just for simplicity's sake. So Jeb can walk around in here. If we want Jeb to go up through the hatch on the top when there's gravity, there would need to be a ladder. As there would be. I mean... Uh, Jeb's jetpack in Realism Overhaul isn't good enough, nor can Jeb jump well enough. But if Jeb wants to get back into the seat, it, clicking anywhere in the spacecraft will give you a board Lynx Neo spacecraft. And Jeb will board the first available seat, basically. Or, actually, if you have two people out of their seat, again, you can't press IVA or EVA here anymore. But, let's say we have two people out of their seat. So Jeb... And the problem is that the pod probably needs more power because they each take the power, the electric charge from the pod. And oh, I'll have to switch vessels. Uh, let's say Bill, leave seat. Okay, so now we've got two out of the seat. And you can see uh, the vessel no longer had enough electric charge to fill them up. So we'll have to figure out that. But if I click the vessel now while I'm controlling with Bill, it has two possibilities. So, seat obstructed cannot board. Well, okay. <laughs> I guess we have one possibility. Uh, yeah, Jeb is sort of obstructing that seat, so. Can Jeb take that seat when he's obstructing it? Yes. Okay, so we can do that. And in space, and this is the fun part, if you will, and the reason why I do this, so let's just cheat it into orbit. And get it into daylight. I created pass-through docking ports, which are docking ports that the Kerbals can actually float through. So we're going to have a pass-through docking port at the top here, it'll fit. The hatch moves off to the side there, you can see the animation. And if we have, well, let's have Jeb do it. Leave seat. Okay, so Jeb can leave Jeb's seat. And of course, in zero gravity, does not need a ladder. And can directly float out into a pass-through docking port to a pass-through station, for instance. And just EVA out like that. There's sort of a flicker that happens when I do this. I don't know about that, but you can see the Kerbals inside. So, I think this is a nice fancy thing. But there are downsides with using, uh, having like, the craft have four built-in command chairs like this. For instance, the quirk that you either have all the seats filled or none, basically, in the VAB. You could you know, have a lot, the whole pad structure and get them in there manually. Uh, you could have them board the spacecraft like they would. Now, this spacecraft doesn't have a side hatch. It only has a top hatch because I wanted to save mass. If you put on a side hatch, that's extra mass. Uh, so, we would have to have a ladder all the way down. Minor inconvenience as far as I'm concerned. And then there's this flickering side effect that I'm not sure about. That might be only close to Earth, or I don't know if it's further away or not. Actually, we don't even need to get into the spacecraft, I don't think. Oh, a little bit of clippiness uh, against the colliders. The hatch itself has a collider, so if we close the hatch... Oh, it actually knocked him out. Oh, because it's on that side. Oh, I guess we'd have to watch out for that, huh? Oh, don't, don't flow away. Jeb, down, up. Let's get Jeb into a seat first, or link spacecraft, and then close the hatch. See for that way. Okay, and of course this has its own RCS. And that's for 
Well, ultimately, it's because the orbital version has to have uh, the ability to control itself during re-entry. It runs on methane and oxygen. So, I intend for this eventually to be released. It's not released yet. Uh, we have to have a service module that's a little bit spiffier than the previous service module for this. But yeah, And then it'll probably be with the pass-through docking ports and pass-through stations, and I want to make them modular. Um, right now, 3.55 tons as a lander can. That's with the supplies. And then if we create the orbital version, it's more than 7 tons for 4 people. So it's about an orion size thing. It, the base is uh, 5 meters in diameter, same as Orion. So it's sort of the same idea, except looking a little bit different and having different features. This is the spacecraft shell. It says EVA capable. That's actually a tag that's not relevant anymore because it'll be EVA capable either way through that hatch. So yeah, let's take this version outside. I've already tested it through re-entry. It says 6.794 tons in the corner there, but that's not correct. I don't know why, but once we bring it outside, it's more than that. Now there is a flaw here too, that if we have the regular docking port, I don't know if when we use a regular docking port and we want to transfer people from one vehicle to another, that would work. I'll have to check that out. Right now, it's really only with the pass-through docking ports in mind. So this is what it looks like. Sort of weird triangular tiles because of the way the textures worked there, but... There are things I have to consider here. Because this is not a normal system, we can't IVA... If I click on it itself, does it say transfer crew? Not really. See, that's the thing. It doesn't have a transfer crew option. And ship manifest doesn't read, I wonder, well, there's no capacity here, but there's Val here, and there's only Val. <laughs> I don't understand why Val is uh, uniquely mentioned here, uh, but Val is, Val is there, yeah. But none of the others are mentioned. Hmm. Yeah. There are definitely quirks here that I have to consider. But it's an idea, that's all. I might have a version that's not meant for pass-through docking ports that's just going to have a regular docking port and not have these command chairs and instead have a more regular system. But anyway, it's an experiment and I think it is an interesting experiment. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.